We're back again, and we're going to look at a hack for distance control of chipping. Um, if you don't have much time to practice, it really helps to have some kind of system in place to help you figure out which club to choose, which landing spot to choose, and basically figure out your carries and rollouts without having to practice much. This is based loosely on the Paul Runyon rule of 12, which is great as a foundation, but it doesn't apply to everybody. We all hit our clubs differently, right? I might spin it more than you, and you might spin it more than me. Uh, we hit different trajectories, we don't all hit the same launch and the same land, so it has to be tailored more to you. And I think we've figured out a way to do it. So don't forget, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let's take a look at what I've got. Step one is to figure out your 50-50 club. So what I'm going to do is pace off from this set of balls uh, to the flag, then back, find a midpoint, mark it with a T. So we've got one, two, Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and a bit. So we've got a T in here at thirteen and a half, so that's a midpoint. What we need to do now is figure out which club carries to that spot and rolls out the full distance. But I've already tested it, so I know if it's a pitching wedge in this situation. So you need to go through, it might be a 9 iron, might be a 52, might be a 54. Like I said, it depends on the kind of ball you play, the surfaces you play on, how you strike it. So let's just take a quick check. So try and land it just left of that tee. Because it does feed to the right. Just a little short on the carry, so it's not going to feed down. It's trying. Let's give it another go. It wasn't best execution. Let's go again. Let's make sure I cover the tee this time. Okay, flag stopped it. wasn't struck well. Okay, one more go. A little clean. There's a better strike. Should be better outcome. Okay, so maybe seven, eight feet by, so it's not far away. Okay, if I jump to a nine iron, it's gonna be way too hot. 54 for me, which is my next club, it's gonna to spin too much and dig its heels in, right? So what do we do with that information? Well, we'll leave the pitch range behind for now, and we'll start to look at these other positions. We'll move to here, we'll move to the second lot of balls here, and we're gonna pace off. We know we've got 13 and a half or so from tee to flag. Let's see what distance is from ball to tee. One, two, three, four, five, six just under seven. Right, it's just under seven, let's say it's six and three quarters. That's gonna give me a ratio of two to one. Okay, so I've got two lots of carry, uh, two lots of roll, sorry, versus one lot of carry. What I'm gonna do with that information, the one to one ratio is at 50-50, remember, two to one is gonna be one club down. So I'm gonna go nine iron, which is here. Look for the same landing spot. Nothing different technically. I'm gonna try and make a pretty simple stroke. Pretty sticky lies around this green, so I'm gonna make sure it's lying well. It all tends to be a little bit into, which isn't great for demonstration. That's pretty much bang on the tee. Okay, not bad. Green's getting quicker as we go. Let's go one more. Slightly short of the tee, but a little bit better. Micro adjustments as the green gets quicker. That's dead on flag high. Uh, let's go forward another set of balls. We're gonna divide it by half again. All right, so we've now got one, two, three, just under four. So that's gonna be a ratio closer to three to one. So my one to one's back there, remember? We had two to one down one club, three to one's down another club, so we go at eight iron. Eight iron landing just at the tee. Simple stroke. Pretty much on it. Marginally quick. I said the green is getting quicker. So we need to start making small adjustments as we go. Because I've placed that tee about two steps onto the green um, in preparation for the video. The reason I've done that is if you consistently look at a landing area that covers the fringe comfortably, you're not going to risk uh, hitting that join. 
okay, and drawing between the, the fringe and the green, kicking it forwards. And usually the green is maybe better as you go further onto it. So that gives me good clearance. Okay, that doesn't mean that's always going to be the spot. Okay, let me show you why I would say that. We can go to this final set of balls here, stitch the A time, and here we're in between. We know we've got one to one here. We've got two to one there. This is bang on halfway, so what do you do? Well, you stick with your one to one and you move your landing spot X amount further onto the green. So this was three steps on. We're going to go three steps past the T. Let's move that up. Now we we'll go pitching wedge, adjust the landing spot, looking for the one to one again. A little short of it, but not bad. Pretty good. Came up well short of it there, so you see it grip, maybe seven or eight feet short. So hopefully you get the idea, right? So the, the baseline or the starting point is get your 50-50. Then get used to starting to pace things off. As you get good at it, you won't need to pace off anymore. You can pretty much eyeball it. Uh, choose a landing spot, a good two steps onto the green if you can, and then figure out the ratio needed from there. Okay, so when you move one step away from one to one, it should be two to one, you go down a club. Three to one, down another club. Four to one, down another club. Your start point is crucial though. I said, it won't be pitch wedge for everyone. It won't be nine iron for everyone, it won't be your sandwich. It's gonna vary, so you need to figure that out first. For me, that's why the rule of 12 kind of falls down a little bit. Now, adjustments you need to make. If this was downhill, I'm gonna play things slightly differently. Obviously, I'll probably move my ratio up at least a club. If I'm going uphill, I might be tempted to move it down. So let's say we had our two to one over there, but it was uphill. I might go to my three to one club and choose the same landing spot. Now, nothing's guaranteed, right? You still have to strike it, you still have to get your flight, and you can't always depend on that first bounce. Now, one thing I would say is, if you can go more towards the lower clubs to bring the spin down, that's gonna help you out in the long run.